Don't forget to go to ashkicking.com for pound for pound the best home health and beauty fragrance product. Uh, I don't, I'm not fighting no more. Kelly, let me do my job. <laughs> I just told you I didn't want to do no interviews. And you said you are going to do interviews. <laughs> now you told me to do interviews. Now you're trying to take me away from them. No. <laughs> Let me show, hey, let me show, let me show Dante's Boxing Nation some love. That's what I'm talking Dante, about. Dante, he, he's been at the Mayweather Boxing Club for years, uh, grinding, working hard. Dante also, you know, paid a lot of his own money, just like a lot of different other companies, to support us. So I, I must show love back. So um, I had to revise this video. Um, I had some audio problems in the last one, and I wanted to make sure that you guys heard everything I said because I was dropping some jewels in this video. So anyway, uh, go ahead and check out this video, and I'll catch up with you guys. Yep, Dante's Boxer Nation, what's going on, guys? So Shane Mosley, he gave a very interesting take on the Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence situation. He even praised Mikey Garcia for his fearless approach. But he also suggested that Mikey Garcia done damn near lost his mind. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and quote exactly what Shea Mosley had to say about this fight. I think that what he sees in Errol Spence is probably not as experienced or knowledgeable in the boxing game as he is, but he has to understand that he's the smaller man and way smaller than Errol Spence. The little mistakes that Errol Spence might have is not going to do away with his size. Plus, he has speed and power as well, and Spence has been in the ring a lot of times with Floyd Mayweather and other fighters, so he has experience as well. Now, once again, I've been telling you guys for the last couple videos, Shane Mosley, he moved up two weight classes to defeat, at the time, top three pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world, Oscar De La Hoya. So Shane Mosley, he compared his situation with Oscar De La Hoya to Mikey Garcia's situation, and this is what he had to say. Quote, I think the difference is I was a bigger lightweight going up to welterweight than Mikey was. Mikey came from like 126 or 122 pounds, and now to go to 147, I think it's going to be too hard for him to make that jump if he wants to stay undefeated. I really wanted to go straight to Oscar because when I was coming up, Oscar was actually lighter than me as an amateur. He fought at 132 pounds, and I fought at 139 in the amateur rankings. With Mikey, it's a little different. He's fighting a guy at 147 who could really fight at 160. It's a different thing. Oscar was obviously a good fighter at 160, but he's really not a big fighter like that. Mikey fighting Spence is fearless, but also probably stupidity. I knew I could beat Oscar. We were built similar in terms of weight and other stuff like speed and power. It was a great fight and we were both equally matched and we gave the fans what they wanted to see." End quote. The one thing I will say is when it comes to Mikey Garcia, Mikey Garcia has already fought at 140 pounds. And when Mikey Garcia fought against Adrian Broner, who also fought at 147 before, Mikey Garcia, he looked stronger of the two. He looked like he was stronger than Adrian Broner. I think people are really underestimating Mikey Garcia's power and him translating his power up to 147. I told you guys this in the previous video. I truly believe that Mikey Garcia is going to surprise fans and even Errol Spence with his power. I still don't think it'll be enough to beat Errol Spence because I think Errol Spence overall is a better fighter than Mikey Garcia. Errol Spence is more of a complete fighter as opposed to Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is very technically sound and everything he does, he does well. But the missing component in Mikey Garcia's attack is his inside game. Mikey Garcia is not an inside fighter. Mikey Garcia is a distance range and he's a mid-range type of puncher. Mikey Garcia wants to set you up with his terrific jab and that hard right hand. If you guys Go back and you watch the Mikey Garcia versus Robert Easter fight, you'll notice there were times where Robert Easter tried to turn the fight into a brawl. He tried to go toe to toe. He tried to get on the inside with Mikey Garcia. And he was successful for a couple seconds until Mikey Garcia pulled out and went right back to the distance that he was comfortable with, which is the distance of landing his right hand makes all the sense in the world. Smart move 
on Mikey Garcia's part. But the difference with Errol Spence is Errol Spence, he can fight on the inside and he's defensively responsible as he's fighting on the inside, which obviously spells bad news for Mikey Garcia and Mikey Garcia fans, obviously. See, when Mikey fought fighters like Orlando Salido and even Robert Easter, fighters that wanted to engage on the inside, Mikey Garcia was able to avoid that. But it will be impossible to avoid an inside confrontation with Errol Spence. Errol Spence is going to find a way to get on the inside. And you know what's really interesting when I think about this is Robert Garcia, uh, Mikey Garcia's uh, trainer and brother, he said before the Robert Easter fight, he said, you may see Mikey Garcia fight a way you've never seen him fight before. He said, uh, you may see him fighting on the inside. And he said, I know Mikey has never done that before, but Mikey can do it, right? And the funny thing is what Robert Easter saying this or what Robert Garcia saying this, what happened was the complete opposite. It was a complete opposite. It was Mikey Garcia that was once again trying to avoid an inside fight with Robert Easter in the later rounds. It was Mikey Garcia. Every time Robert Easter got on the inside, it was Mikey Garcia that would pull out and he would go back to his jab and his right hand. So this tells me that even though they planned on fighting on the inside, they still were not comfortable to do it. And if they weren't comfortable to do it against Robert Easter, they're certainly not gonna be comfortable to do it against Errol Spence, which is bad news for Team Garcia. You know, Mickey Bay, he once told me that when he was coming up in the amateurs with Andre Ward, the Durrell brothers, and all of them, Nonito Donaire as well, he said Donaire at the time was bigger than a lot of the fighters. He was bigger than the Durrells, the Andre Wards, when they were kids, when they were in the amateurs. So clearly, once again, my point is, this is why you cannot compare the size of fighters as teenagers in the amateur rankings. Shane Mosley fought as a pro at 135 for a very, very long time. And when he fought against Oscar De La Hoya, you could clearly see who the bigger man was in the ring. You could clearly see it. And to further prove my point, Oscar De La Hoya himself, he even fought Shane Mosley like he was the naturally bigger man. Because by way of contrast, if you guys recall, when Oscar fought against Felix Trinidad for the very first time, he was a boxer. He was constantly moving. You could tell he really, really respected Felix Trinidad's power. But when he fought against Shane Mosley, we seen a different Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya was the aggressor. Oscar De La Hoya was constantly coming forward in that fight. He was fighting. Uh, he was walking through a lot of Mosley's punches, matter of fact. He was fighting Shane Mosley as if he was the naturally bigger man. Now, once again, by way of contrast, when Oscar De La Hoya fought Felix Trinidad, it was the complete contrary. He fought a defensive fight. He constantly moved. You could tell he clearly respected Tito Trinidad's size and power. Matter of fact, he respected Trinidad's power so much that in the last three rounds, Oscar De La Hoya didn't even bother throwing punches anymore. He just constantly moved and moved and moved. So this clearly proves that even Oscar De La Hoya believed that Shane Mosley was the much smaller guy in the ring because Oscar De La Hoya was trying to walk through Shane Mosley's punches. Never did he try to walk through Trinidad's punches. So the one thing I do agree with Shane Mosley on is the fact that this is definitely an uphill battle for Mikey Garcia and there's a very good chance he will get knocked out if he fights against Errol Spence. But I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up catching Errol Spence with something that really gets Errol Spence's um, attention in the fight. Kind of like Lamont Peterson did. But speaking of Lamont Peterson, you know, when you think of how Lamont Peterson did with Errol Spence, you think of how Kel Brook did with Errol Spence, you think about the fact Errol Spence has sparred with Floyd Mayweather, sparred with, he spars today with Jamel Charlo. It's very hard to imagine Mikey Garcia being able to match wits with Errol Spence because of who he's been in the ring with. 
you know, once again, for anyone thinking that Errol Spence is just some mindless brawler who's one dimensional, you guys do not know Errol Spence. I don't watch this man spar with Jamel Charlo. And I can tell you right now, it was an aggressive chess match in there. And the reason why I say chess match, because both fighters were using their intelligence in there, okay? Errol Spence was just as intelligent as, Jamal, as Jamel Charlo was in there. I mean, they had to really, really raise their game because of who they were in the ring with. So with that being said, I'm looking for the announcement. I'm looking for the announcement. I mean, if Mikey Garcia is serious about fighting Errol Spence, we should get an announcement like really soon because a fight like this, like Errol Spence said, is easy to make. It's very easy to make. Mikey Garcia works with Al Heyman. So does um, Errol Spence, obviously. They both fight on Showtime. This is a very, very easy fight to make. So if Mikey Garcia is serious we should get an announcement within, I would say, within, what, the next two to three weeks? Within the next two to three weeks, we should be getting an announcement. So let's see what happens. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.